Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, polar bears haven't got long, the dinosaur family tree is altered, and a microraptor molts. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Nature has said that if climate change is not more thoroughly tackled, polar bears could go extinct by the end of the century. The researchers say that because the ice around their hunting grounds is shrinking, polar bears are finding it more difficult to hunt, and this becomes most problematic when female bears aren't able to build up enough fat to supply their young with enough milk, meaning that the young are less likely to survive. In other news is the description of a fascinating specimen of sauropod bone from the late Jurassic of northwestern China. This bone preserves tiny feeding traces that appear to have been inflicted by a small Mesozoic mammal and indicates the oldest evidence currently known to science of mammalian feeding behaviour in the fossil record. The way the marks are positioned and the fact that the bone surface appears gnawed suggests that the mammals were selectively feeding on the remaining soft tissue of the dinosaur carcass, a fascinating bit of preserved prehistoric behaviour. And now over to Ben with some more paleontology news. Thanks Doug. Also in the news this week is a significant new paper that has examined the phylogeny of the Ceropodons, the group of dinosaurs that includes the Ornithopods, Pachycephalosaurians and Ceratopsians. This analysis compiled data from previous studies, re-evaluated the characters of their bones, as well as including more recently described seropodons and related dinosaurs in a phylogenetic analysis. The result of their analysis actually recovered the heterodontosaurids as a paraphyletic or unnatural grouping, placing them as basal marginocephalians that gradually leads to pachycephalosaurs. This therefore means that heterodontosaurs could, according to the definition given by an older study, be counted as members of Pachycephalosauria. The reorganisation of the grouping also indicates that ornithopods probably originated in the very earliest Jurassic, so a very interesting and important development in the world of dinosaur paleontology. And finally is an interesting study that has found fossilised evidence of sequential wing molt in the dromaeosaur microraptor. Sequential molting, as opposed to non-sequential molting, is when the flight feathers are gradually replaced slowly and not all at once, enabling the animal to continue flying through the molting period. Microraptor is the earliest known feathered vertebrate to display this method of molting, and as such indicates that the animal was able to fly throughout the whole year, and that therefore flight was essential to Microraptor for either daily foraging or predator evasion. An intriguing insight into the lifestyle of this remarkable little theropod. Well, that's it for the paleontology news. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.